first of all, uh, many thanks for giving me for uh, the chance to be the voice of the missing Eritreans. Um, in 2002, I personally I was affected um, when my cousin and my aunt uh, were on a boat from Libya arriving in Italy, and uh, we found out that they capsized and died. Um, as I grew up in Sweden, so I do not have, I did not know my cousin or my aunt that well, so I was not affected as uh, Walid or Kasim or uh, Bakari. <coughs> but then again, you know, in 2009, a cousin of mine, also my first cousin, went missing, and until this day, uh, we don't know if he's alive or not. And my uncle just died six months ago while waiting every month asking, have you found out something about your cousin? And unfortunately, I did not have an answer for my family. But I'm here to discuss mainly about the missing Eritreans in general. Um, it feels having been an activist for the last 13 years, dealing on a daily basis with people that go missing, uh, listening to mothers uh, talking about their child, it, the stories really affect you. There are some stories I would like to share because we don't have that much time, but uh, one mother lost her son in Eritrea, I mean, being held incommunicado by the government of Eritrea, not knowing if he's alive or not. Second child went missing in Egypt. Um, the body, she was never able to recover his body. And the third child went missing last year uh, on their way to Italy. Um, this poor mother don't know, or were not, she was blessed with three killed children, but she was not able to bury or to know the whereabouts of her children. So this is a story that I listen on a daily basis, and this has encouraged me to work on uh, Missing Eritreans page on Facebook, using social media, asking people to send their pictures of the missing, uh, and any description of the missing, and also uh, when or where he was seen last time. Um, the sad part, just like Kasim, uh, many of this family, they do not only miss their loved one, but they get exploited by people who claim to help them. They will claim, oh, I have your son. So of course you will be happy. You haven't heard about the whereabouts of your son for the last 10 years, and you are being asked to send $10,000. Any family would do that, regardless whether you have money or not. Um, this is what I start seeing, and that's... Uh, the reason that I created the Facebook page of Missing Eritreans to protect the families from publishing their phone numbers because majority of the exploiters, they go through Facebook profiles of the missing and then they contact the family directly as they always publish their phone numbers. Uh, so these are the kind of stories that I deal with and I'll continue as we continue. Um, this is actually, as we are talking about the missing people, so I would like to pass this picture so that you have an idea what it is that uh, maybe you could pass it. Um, and if you could pass it. I brought this picture is it happened here in October 3, 2013 in Lampedusa, which all these coffins belong to my people. They were all Eritreans. Um, trying to identify these people, which was, in this case, it was easy because they were 155 survivors. And what was impressive is I was there as the survivors themselves were compiling the list of the people that were in the boat. Um, we managed to get all the names of the 368 people. So these are identified refugees. But as you can see, the coffins, and especially the white coffins, are for the children. Um, they are all numbered, even though they have names. So uh, a friend of mine wrote a poem uh, because she couldn't stand seeing the numbers. And I would like to read that poem if it's OK with you. Sorry. <laughs> Just disappear. <sighs> yeah. I wonder what she called you, little one. Your precious mama. Maybe she called you Brahan, my light. Or did she call you Heaven, <laughs> my pride? She, might, she may have called you Nazanet after rest she yearned. Or were you Awat, victory? Tell me, little one, what did your mama name you after her hope? 
or did she call you Amen as an end of her prayers? Did she name you after the saint your grandpa prayed to, or were you named after the brother she lost in prison? Maybe after her father long gone. Did she name you Sina after the desert she crossed, or Eritrea, the land she reluctantly left? Perhaps she named you for the land you were to inherit. Tell me, little one, what did your precious mama call you? For I can't bear you being called number 92. Uh, this is my friend Salam Kidane who wrote this poem, and I felt that it's very important that we document and uh, that they are recognized by their names, not by numbers, especially when they have a name. So I encourage everybody to, to work for this.